Hey guys, uh, this video is about an event that took place years ago with a business leader there, Miriam. The lady who had come from Pan Bimbo, Mexico, and thought that aviation parts were pan dulce sweet bread and thought parts should be getting done like that. She had no idea about what the hell we would do at work, right? Anyways, when teaming started, we would have teaming meetings. Teaming, in our case on third shift, the first shift focal points would meet us in the training room upstairs. And the quality guys, safety, production, they'll talk to us about you know, what's going on with the line. You know, Feature-wise, currently, problems, whatever, right? Whatever the issue was, they'll talk about. So a week before, or two weeks before this, a machine operator on third shift was damaging parts. And the CF6 line, and I believe it was Frank Tapia. Hey Frank, he like, I better come that way. <laughs> Anyways, I think it was Frank. I don't know if he got a write up or, and or suspended or one or the other, right? Anyways, he was damaging parts because he was machining parts using a fixture that wasn't for those specific parts. So there was always a little wiggle room, a little play. And so when he went by machining, they'll get damaged. So then they had to get rewelded, reblended, and remachined, right? And he brought it up several times to the business leader, Miriam, at the time. And I was there when I heard her tell him that they didn't have money for that right now to make, to pay for a fixture, to just work with what we had because of the time restraints and the like the backlog or whatever, right? But Tapia had specifically told her like, "This is happening." These damages are happening, and wheel workers getting done is making things like take longer. So, again, she told me, Just work with what you have, and she left. Fast forward a couple days later, is when Frank got in trouble for m messing up a lot of parts, they had to get fixed. So, he got disciplined for it. I don't remember if he got suspended or written, uh, written up, I don't remember that, right? Anyways, when the we had the teaming meeting that Thursday. The, produ the production guy talked, the safety guy talked, you know, but it was quality. Uh, Art Isaguirre. <laughs> What's up, Art? Anyways, um, he was talking about the, the quality issues that we had at the line. He mentioned damages that, were, that, that had happened. And I raised my hand to ask a question. I knew what was going to happen. Business leader was there. The teaming flunky was there, Javier. So I raised my hand and asked a question. The, the the I brought up the scenario that happened on the shop floor. I was like, what happens, for example, what happens when a machine operator or an employee brings up an issue to to the immediate uh, leadership, right? Um, regarding the shop damages, well, the, the damage that was happening and had to get refixed and reworked, whatever, right? He brought it up multiple times. And then he was disciplined for it. But he did everything he was supposed to do the right way. Now, the business leader who told him to work with what we had, because there was no money, how come they didn't get disciplined? Did they get written up, suspended? How come the employee is only when they got screwed over? When he was following direct orders from his superiors, how come he had to pay the price? And when I was asking this, saying this, Art knew exactly what I was talking about. He just like smirked. And he didn't want to go there, but he had no choice, right? Because I brought it up in the open. And I visibly saw Miriam get her pants in a bunch, you know? And, I, and again, all third shift nozzles was behind me. They're listening to everything, you know? And so anyways, Art said that um, we don't outsource you know, send money for fixtures, they get done in-house. So he doesn't know anything about why money would be needed for fixtures. To which she got, she was sitting in front of me, like 15 feet away, and she was getting redder, like she, like she was, I had ants in her pants, like she wanted to foot. I knew where she was, I knew she had a zero, like a, couldn't control her temper, her fucking attitude, whatever, right? I knew what I was doing. I just wanted every, everyone to see what kind of fucking shit she was. 
and, and people were scared of it. That annoys the hell out of me. Like, why do you guys, why do you guys scared of people management positions? That makes them think, think in their little small fucking pea brains that they own you guys. Fuck. You know, that piss, I was pissed me off. That's why whenever we had these teaming meetings, I never hesitated to put people on blast in front of everyone to show people. Don't be scared of these fucks. Hold them accountable. So anyways, um, yeah, when Art was done explaining about the uh, fixtures, right, she was like, Laudo, um, after the meeting right now, could you come to my office so I could show you the facts? And I was like, nah, Miriam, I'm gonna go home and go to sleep right now. You can talk to me, tell me right now in front of everyone. So she got even redder, you know? And uh, Javier was like, hey, Laudo, um, Trying to be a saber hole, right? What are you doing to help the line? What do you help? What do you help? What do you do to help? I was like, I show up. I pull my fucking weight. I do what I'm supposed to do, and then some. I was like, just because your fucking idea of teaming, we decided on a, on a team name, a damn drawing hanging up from the rafters, doesn't make it a team. Teaming is fucking up and it's making you look bad, not me. I'll go home and sleep like a baby. <laughs> to which people behind me were giggling. I think during this exchange, Marco, he was just like, fuck. Because he was going to hear it from that bitch, you know? <laughs> but, you know, I did that on purpose. All the time, as much as I could. So people can see, like, dude, don't be scared of these people, man. I'm gonna put the link in the description of a little clip you should watch. Click on them and watch it. As to what I believe their fucking mentality is. I'll put the link in the description to a clip. I hope you just watch it, right? You know, I know there's a lot of people there in the workplace. Quite a few that are, you know, follower, followers of the word. Of God and Jesus, right? I think the majority of you guys are all talk, man. You guys are all... You guys don't even deserve to to call yourselves any followers of anything, because Jesus would see things that are jacked up and would speak up, and hold people accountable. He won't stay quiet and see injustices against people who are, couldn't speak for themselves. And I see that I saw that a lot because you guys are like, for example, Rick, Raina. Dude, you're a good guy, man. You're a good dude. I'll give you that. I've never had an issue, but dude, you see things that are fucked up. You know, you, your word has some pull. People call you company guy, call you all kinds of derogatory shit. I don't. I like you. So yeah, homeboy, homeboys, y'all gonna talk, to the, talk that talk. Y'all gotta walk that walk, man. Jesus wasn't a coward, you know? What is the Revelations uh, 21 and 8? The cowardly, unbelievers, murderers, sorcerers, idolaters, sexually immoral, and not liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. And who leads that group? The cowardly. Don't be scared. How many times does God say in the, in the Bible, do not fear? A ton. So why are you guys scared of to lose your jobs? Hold people accountable. Doesn't make sense. It's never made sense to me. Like I, I was talking to my wife yesterday, the day before, like talking about some of you guys, old former coworkers. Like I don't get it. You guys know the word, word for word, everything. I don't. I'm still kind of new. I'm still the prodigal child, or son, making my way back again. But all that has been ingrained into my DNA since I was small. Without me physically knowing. You know things are fucked up there. Yet y'all stay quiet. Problem. I guess we all built differently, right? So have a good one, guys.